My favorite phrase in all of the spiritual teachings I've come upon comes from the Bhagavad Gita, the classic text of ancient India. It teaches as it is. Observe and inquire into reality as it is. Normally, we see the world as we are, not as it is. To see reality as it is, we have to change the instrument we use to investigate, which is ourselves. I'm going to share a story with you about an encounter that happened one day during my meditation practice. It was an encounter with beings that identified themselves to me as the Seraphim, which for those who are unfamiliar is the name for the angels that are said to surround the throne of heaven in the Bible. Such encounters are a very prominent but seldom discussed feature of the perennial wisdom and found in virtually every spiritual tradition. While the symbols and images change from culture to culture, there's one inner evolutionary mechanism or developmental process that they point toward. This experience was very humbling for me. For most of my life, my ego structure has had an aversion to people who talk about angels or any otherworldly beings for that matter. I had a lot of judgment and concepts around these things. But nevertheless, I have a clear inner direction to report on my experience. So perhaps this is some kind of karmic reckoning for me. What I'm going to talk about is not related to religion or beliefs, but has to do with encountering new dimensions of your own being. I'm going to try to convey the experience precisely without interpretation or concepts. I do have some insights that I will share at the end. But I think it's important that the description of the actual experience is neutral, without any embellishment. This experience happened during a period when I was doing a lot of meditation. I entered into a Samadhi state or a Turiya state, which is described in the Samadhi films in detail. So this was a state of continuous presence, presence of primordial awareness, and it lasted for several days. I had been doing meditation for over 20 years and also had run a meditation retreat center, the Samadhi Center in Canada for several years. Early in my practice, I started out using various techniques, particularly Buddhist techniques, such as those related to shamatha, which is tranquility, vipassana, which is insight meditation. And after exploring techniques for over a decade, I was drawn eventually to the practices of non-doing or non-practice, self-inquiry, maha mudra, choiceless awareness, shikantaza, or what they call just sitting in Zen. I realized that the meditation that leads to samadhi is not an activity or a doing but a waking up to the dimension of being, which is what I've referred to as primordial awareness. On the day in question, I was abiding as awareness, allowing everything to be as it is, and I had stopped discriminating pain and pleasure. I was experiencing sat chit ananda, the bliss that comes when primordial awareness is present. One realizes a new level of consciousness that includes and yet transcends the senses. The senses are essentially maxed out, and energy expands through them into higher realms, activating what Rudolf Steiner would call organs of higher perception. 
In this experience, an unfamiliar but profoundly exquisite feeling rose up within the energetic body. Like a new dimension of consciousness waking up or a new faculty coming online. This isn't my usual language, but it felt like this feeling was placed in me by God. There's always a tendency within the ego to grasp and hold experiences, especially when beautiful experiences happen. But on this day, I didn't grasp at it. I just allowed it to unfold without any thoughts arising whatsoever, just having a complete experience of it. At least initially, this was the case. I would describe it as a deeply sacred feeling. And I felt intuitively that this was an ancient way to pray. This was prayer itself. Until this moment, I had not known what true prayer was. If you had asked me prior to this, I undoubtedly would have said that I did know. My ego, which is a highly spiritualized ego, likes to think that it knows everything, but it gets humbled over and over. Now I know that I don't know what I don't know. The phenomena unfolding within the self-structure was something different than what for 20 years I considered meditation to be. It was something utterly unknown. I began to meditate or pray in this sacred way, although I can take no credit for it happening whatsoever. It was just happening. It was like the body and energy structure were being prayed. Awareness was purely aware, non-local, all pervasive, yet nowhere. Samadhi is not an experience, but a collapse of the duality of experiencer and the experienced. A luminous presence appeared, interfacing with my energy field at the third eye. At this point, there were actually several levels of phenomena playing out simultaneously. I was aware of my gross physical body meditating, and through the inner vision, I perceived what seemed to be some kind of a temple. There was a humanoid figure there with wings and a bird tail. In my mind at the time, I thought that he looked like a Sufi. He had a flat hat, and a beard, and he was carrying a glowing ring. I felt an incredible power in this being, and somehow I knew that the ring he was holding was alive. Around him were angelic light beings who identified themselves as the Seraphim. As soon as I turned my attention to the light beings, I did not see the man in the Sufi hat any longer. I couldn't focus on these light beings directly. They were indistinct, like moving fractals, recursive patterns that held a general form, but they were changing endlessly, like dancing energy. They were beautiful, and I wanted to focus on them, but I couldn't, or they would start to disappear. So I relaxed into a diffuse sort of vision, accepting that I couldn't form a distinct image of them. There were three of them, and they moved and spoke as one. These are their exact words. We are the Seraphim. If you merge with our light, there is much we can show you. To become like us, you must burn only with love for the Creator, and His consuming fire will quickly transform you into the flaming likeness of the Seraphim. They emphasized the word only, and the word felt significant. Each of the three was emanating the same sacred feeling or vibration. Just like it says in the Bible, they emanated holy, holy, holy. But it was not an auditory word or mantra. It's hard to describe, but somehow their very being was that vibration or holy emanation. 
What was strange was that the seraphim seemed somehow mechanical. This part I don't really understand. They were conscious and interactive, yet it seemed like a machine turning on with an endless loop, like an endlessly repeating message. I saw their pattern. It seemed like they were an ancient template groaning and creaking, flickering into life for the specific purpose. At first their energy was a bit dim, but as I opened to the experience, they energized to a full glow. My self-structure was in awe. But yet awareness was just observing, unmoved. They told me that when the seraphim come, it is usually followed by great turmoil. I wasn't sure at the time if they meant great turmoil in my life or turmoil on earth. Through the seraphim, the soul is able to complete its journey to God and live. Those were the exact words given. Through the seraphim, the soul is able to complete its journey to God and live. The sacred feeling started to grow, and I began to feel a deep love, a love without discrimination, like a sun shining. There are no words for this. There was a deep letting go within my being, and I actually started to change into light, or emptiness, or both. It was not dreamlike, but absolutely vivid, and seemed startlingly real happening on multiple levels of self. I started to burn with a living white flame, starting at the feet, and all of me was being pulled towards God. It was an atomic dissolution. I've gone through countless death experiences or letting go experiences. During meditation practice or entheogen experiences, breathing, yoga exercises, but this seemed totally different, more real, hyper-real and deeper, connected to the soul. It was a level of non-dual union and cessation of self that was absolute. When this dissolution started happening, at a point, my mind came back online and asked, Am I dying? Is this the end of my actual life? And as soon as that happened, I realized I had become identified. I had generated an egoic thought, a fearful thought, and the dissolution process stopped. Everything vanished. If whatever was happening had completed, I honestly don't know if I would be here to tell about it. So that is the description of the event itself. Now I'm going to give you a sort of commentary, what I think or feel about the event. So first, this was a surprising event for several reasons. In this single experience, I confirmed without a doubt that the higher realms described by the spiritual masters are as real or more real than this world. It was also surprising that it happened to me, even though to a large degree there was a letting go of my self-identification. I certainly am not the strongest meditator. I'm not prone to devotion. And although I've done a lot of inner work and maybe purified many attachments I still fall into identification and ego entrapments. I'm far from being any kind of saint. So my opinion, or my feeling about this, is that I was given a preview of what is to come, of what is possible for human evolution, so that I can tell you about it. To prepare the groundwork for those who will come in the future, who will grow and evolve into union with the Source. 
through imitation of the seraphim, or you could say by matching their vibration, humans can have the same unmediated union with God. We're meant to imitate them, merge with their light, to become like them, but not to worship them. They represent a latent possibility within ourselves. It's important to let go of the experience so that you don't add it to your self-structure, so that the ego doesn't hang on to it and create some identity or some new locked-in worldview. The paradox is that peak experiences or mystical experiences tend to unfold around samadhi. But it is important not to confuse any experience with samadhi itself. There are a number of insights that I've taken from the experience. When I came back into the world from this, one huge insight was that we as human beings are utterly ignorant of what we are and what our place is in the universe. Humans are myopic creatures full of hubris to a degree that is laughable. We've mastered the arts of distortion and delusion and limitation. We've lost any sense of our place in the great chain of being. Instead, we've cultivated an independent self, which is an amazing creation in its own right. But this independent self has now grown to a point where we have a choice. We have a choice to serve the directions and wants of that self, or to rejoin the spiral of life in alignment with the divine plan. Realizing Samadhi is only the first step in an unfathomable unfolding journey to expand, expanding the inner lotus into higher worlds, or the enlightenment process, which is a trajectory, not a destination. Awakening is waking up to the unchanging dimension of absolute being, pure consciousness, while enlightenment is about the ongoing dance of evolution and involution within the manifested world, the endless cycle of becoming, being and becoming, merging, dancing as one. The human game allows the possibility to create an expanded and purified human vessel. The catch is we have to sacrifice the egoic wants to allow this divine connection. This is why Jesus is referred to as the Lamb of God. Jesus, the human person, was sacrificed so that the Christ consciousness, the Logos, could live through human form. Many non-dual teachers will say, everything is perfect as it is. Primordial consciousness is perfect as it is. There is a sacred simplicity in this moment, a sacred perfection in this moment. And yet at the same time, we're growing this ever unfolding lotus with the possibility of offering the human vessel to be inhabited by these levels of consciousness. The paradox is that it's all you in the big sense of you. This higher level of consciousness isn't some foreign entity, but you are that. An angel is simply a conscious field of fluctuating energy with the sole purpose of connecting us with the one source. This little human being wires into it and becomes more of what it can be, becoming more of a bridge from the manifested world to the unmanifested. In this sense, the seraphim are teaching us what we might become.